Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Carter here. Today I'm going to be talking about the pros and cons of being on the offensive side of the ball in NBA 2K15. Let's hop right into it. The first pro on this list will be better spacing. And the reason for better spacing is to have the offensive player actually operate. You know, a lot of us play my career. Some of us play my team. A lot of us may play quick games and a lot of us play on a park. Now, I could say for quick game, the spacing looks amazing. Um, for other modes, I can't talk about right now. So let's just dive into quick game. Um, if you're playing anything such as quick game or my team, you know, or even my league or even my GM, you know, you're playing with all five players. So the spacing and the AI are actually a little smarter this year. So spacing is key. Now, as an offensive player, you need space to operate, get to the paint. You don't want four people to, e you know, easily come over to you. Somebody kick the ball loose and it's a turnover on you. So I can tell you that the spacing is better. You can operate call plays. Um, people won't bump into each other much, you know. Um, and when I caught about three or four plays straight and everything was executed pretty good. So, you know, spacing is key. Let's hop into the next topic. All right, so the second pro on this list will be play calling. Now, I said a little bit about play calling in the last topic, but let me deep dive into it. So when you call plays on offense, um, a lot of people say, oh, well, all people do is call isolation. They call, you know, post up and things of that nature. Well, those type of play calls are actually been changed this year. Um, when you hit over on the D-pad, instead of hitting a button such as X squared, triangle, circle, or A, B, Y, X, you're actually going to be hitting the D-pad again. So for isolations and stuff like that, you'll be putting over and then down, you know, over, then up, or, you know, just calling those quick plays. Now, for actual real play calling, like set plays for certain players, of course, it's the same button config as last year. You hit over in the next panel and all the play calls pop up, the players pop up, the icons pop up on the players, and you can call for certain plays. You can call for screens. It's a lot of different things that you have. Now, uh, everybody knows that the czar is like, you know, very big on play calling. And he was one of the people that specialized on that this year. So I do like the play calling, you know, offensively. Um, I can't wait to hop into my career and see, you know, what happens when I call plays and everything like that. Because in quick game, when you call play, your teammates do what you do or and are supposed to do. And um, the defense... I can say that they do make their adjustments after a few call plays. So if you try to run like the same play two or three times straight, just know that, you know, the defense is going to get smarter as well. Uh, let's hop into the next topic. All right. So this year, um, everybody knows that point of emphasis was something that was big last year, but was kind of flawed because you couldn't really call plays. Now this year, point of emphasis I'm going to just call it POE. Um, it is very big to the sense where you can actually, you know, while you're dribbling, doing what you're doing, um, you can set up your point of emphasis while you're coming down, and then you can call your play, and it all kind of works out. So if you're calling a post play for a post player such as Joel Embiid, and Michael Carter Williams is coming down, and he's setting up his POE where, you know, he wants, you know, to post up, play through a player, and then play at a high tempo or, you know, play average, you know, things like that. You can set all of that up in POE. It's not the same old, well, oh, I'm going to, you know, crash the offensive glass or, you know, something like that. They have a little uh, more options this year. And I think that it works well with the play calling. So point of emphasis is something that a lot of people might want to look at. And I would definitely say if you're a competitive gamer, you probably want to do a lot of POE with um, play calling because it's not going to be much cheese that can kind of get you ahead in life. So I would definitely look into that. Let's hop into the next topic. All right. So the next pro on the list will be kickball violations. Uh, this year, NBA 2K has done a better job at recognizing what is a kickball and what is not a kickball. Now, last year, just about anything, you know, any little nudge, the ball would come loose. You would be like, bro, why is this happening? This year, I can say I've kind of like test the limits, I guess you could say. Um, 
Now, everybody knows that, you know, if you hit a spin move into a player, you know, that would like jar the ball loose a lot. That animation kind of still happens, but if a player is running after ball after the ball and he actually kicks it, it will be called for a kickball. Um, as well as if you're doing a crossover, right? Now, there's like something like that's deliberate and, you know, intentional, but there's also things that are like minor accidents. But I've seen times where I was playing as Michael Carter Williams and I did a crossover and Aaron McKee was guarding me and the ball actually hit his foot. And they called a kickball violation, but it wasn't like a deliberate one, like where, you know, usually in if a, if a player picks up his dribble and he's forced to pass, a player would like kick his leg out like, hey, yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to let you do that. That's deliberate. But this one was like accidental, but they still called a kick, kickball violation because the ball hit his foot. So I'm going to be happy to see more kickball violations. And I know a lot of you players are because that kind of kills the turnover ratio with kickball violations. So I'm, I'm glad that that's been uh, tuned up a little bit. Um, let's hop into the next topic. All right, the next pro on this list will be the new signature gathers in NBA 2K. Now, I can tell you guys right now, every player has like his own set gather, of course, but as a my career player, it's probably going to take you a long time to figure out that signature gather that you like. Now, let's talk about this. I've played with Michael Carter Williams, Damian Lillard, Darren Williams, Kyrie Irving, Ricky Rubio, and who else? I played with Allen Iverson. I played with who else? What other bomb point guard did I play with? Oh, and I played with David Ipock and Carter. Oh. Nah, but um, as the signature gathers go, Kyrie Irving's signature gather is kind of like very beast. So basically, the way they're set up is you flick the right stick towards the basket, and that sets up the gather. So while he's doing his gather, it's your choice if you want to spin, you want to cross over, you want to step back. And it kind of like sets you up to kind of like get past the defender because there's like not really much you can do like crossover, 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 spin, spin, spin. Like that's not really a setup move. So these little signature gathers are more of setup moves so you can kind of get past the defender so and it's also to have the defender kind of back off you because he don't doesn't know what to do and you can you know kind of pull up for the mid-range jump shot or something like that um i wouldn't do a signature gather and then pull up for a three-point shot <laughs> it, it ain't gonna work out too good so i can say that signature gathers will be a go-to move for guys to actually get past defenders let's hop into the next topic All right, so the next pro on this list is the new passing config. Now, everybody knows in NBA 2K14, the flashy pass was L2 modifier with the stick, right? Well, this year, that's not it. The L2 plus the stick is like a general pass. But to call for a alley-oop, you press L2 square. Um, for another pass set, like a lob pass into the paint, you press L2 triangle. And for, I believe, either, uh, I think it's a bounce pass, you press L2 and X. And for a flashy pass, I believe it is L2 and circle. Now, for these, of course, it is all about the direction that you have your left stick in so you know if you're running down the court and you want to throw an alley -oop to the guy in the corner everybody usually presses their stick up and then press the alley -oop key um so that's basically going to be it for like the whole button config and i kind of think that this is a little bit better because it gives l2 like its own specific thing like hey l2 you're now for passing like that's that's what it kind of means like you know when a perlet layer wants to shoot some press square, but if he wants to throw alley oop, he presses L2 with it. So L2 is like a mean modifier for passing this year. Um, I will have more information on the full button config very soon. So, you know, just hold tight on that. But let's hop into the next topic.
All right, so the next pro on this list will be the mid-range game. And the reason for this is, even though we don't see many mid-range jump shots in the NBA, this is going to be something that kind of gets a player going in NBA 2K15. And the reason for that is, with all the new shot meter things and everything like that, you kind of want to get your player going before you think, you know, you can get on a hot streak. Because if you come out the gate shooting three-point shots and you're you're not shooting them well, you're not, you know, setting taking set shots, you're not open your dude will go cold very fast so you definitely want to take mid-range jump shots you know get your guy going and you know hopefully if he's an athletic player and you know you get a couple good shots to go maybe he can get those boosts to you know get some nice and one contact layup some dunks off a fast break you know maybe even a few posterizers um if you have a three-point shooter um, if he gets the mid-range game going and, you know, um, once a player keys in on another guy, he's in the corner, chilling, make, it, make a few um, three-point shots, you know, you, but you have to look at the hot zones of a player. Don't just go into a game not knowing where this player's hot zones are. You always want to check hot zones. And the reason for that is if you take a bunch of shots in a cold zone, just know that your player will be freezing in less than three possessions. All right, let's hop into the next topic. All right, so the final pro for being on the offensive side of the ball is floaters. Floaters are very, very key in NBA 2K15, and this is why I say this. There's not going to be too many players that posterize like it was in NBA 2K14. So as a point guard, as a player that I, I create every year, I know for a fact that I'm going to be taking a lot of floaters because once you kind of get past your defender, Guess where you are? You are usually at the top of the cylinder around the free throw line or you're like right near the dotted line, you know, or in between the dotted the dotted circle and the foul line. So floaters will be very key this year. It'll get your player going. It'll set your player up. And, you know, if, you, if you're not like a passing person and you want to get some offense going, like you're definitely going to need the floaters. Trust me. This is not a lie. I'm not you know, saying this just because, you know, I don't want you guys to try your best. I'm saying try some floaters to get your guy going. Subscribe, like the video, leave me a comment on your thoughts. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section as well. This is IKC signing out. I'm going to be talking about NBA 2K15 until launch, and I hope you guys are going to be with me the whole way. Peace out, guys. Yeah.